Hello, I'm Jose Erko, talking to people, and this video is a two bird killer with one stone. That's kind of stones, kill more than one bird. And the birds I want to kill here are as follows. One, I want to talk about what I can only describe as a bit of a problem. <laughs> it's a good, not, not a terrible problem to have for me, but... Um, I swear I'm addicted to the always open room. I have an addiction. I have a problem. I can't stop spending all my free time in there talking to people. It's instant, like Taylor was saying right now, instant fucking FE gratification for me. And it is fucking addictive. I can sit in there for, I've been sitting in there all fucking day. It is 1245 AM. I have been on go to meeting off and on all day. I did leave for a little while to do some other things. I went out to dinner with homie Nick, who was here earlier, and I worked with my debaters a little bit. Other than that, I spent the whole fucking day on go to meeting. Doing what? I was chatting with people, you know, I me mean, just talking with people, talking with famous people. That's what I've been doing. But <laughs> it's addictive. I'm a, I'm a little, I, I needed to do some other things today besides just fucking, how, how long have I been talking with Taylor? Taylor and I can talk for fucking 16 hours. No problem, I bet. Check it out if you haven't been there. And after you're done in there, you can go to the Raw channel and you can see yourself. How, how, how you look, how you talk, all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, it's a... It's sort of a dangerous room almost because... You're not, you're not necessarily thinking... I should be careful with what I say. It's being recorded. Of course, it is being recorded. And it's being published immediately. Tiffany killed it. Tiffany got that done. And in fact, I'm going to send her money tomorrow. So Tiffany, if you see this video, I'll send you money tomorrow. And then we got one more thing. Two more things, really. Uh... Yeah. Anyway, trying to figure out how much money I'm going to spend on that. Regardless, once the marketplace is in place and the world's greatest collectibles market is opened up, I fully expect to see good revenue coming in. Because I'm going to be offering a product that is actually a smart investment. I believe it to be a smart investment. That's, that's, that's my pitch, is a smart investment. Because why? Well, because I'm putting my whole ass into making it a smart investment. In part, I'm putting all this energy into creating, conceiving, executing this collectibles market for one-of-a-kind objects. There can't be a glut in the collectibles market because I'm going to have a tight gatekeeper role on that, for one thing. Number two... There's a finite number of objects that I can make to sell. These are all going to be one-of-a-kind objects. They're all going to come with multiple handwritten certificates of authenticity and stuff like that. <laughs> I know they're sort of nonsense to prove it's provenance, and I can take pictures of it and have the provenance up there. Once it's sold, this is the object that was sold. This is what it looks like. It's object number whatever in the set, and the objects will be released in sets. Meanwhile, hopefully the channel will continue to grow, and I want to maximize my visibility, my fame. I want to become famous. I want to become as famous as I possibly can. That's my goal. I want to be the most famous person in the world. If I can get even a fraction of the most famous person in the world, your collectible will increase in value, especially given the fact that it's already established to be part of a collectibles market with 
its own resale market in place that serves the interests of the reseller and the owner of the collectible. So when you resell at a marketplace, there'll be you'll get uh, the vast majority of the money, like m more than ninety percent. I'll take a cut because you know I want to get money, and that's what businesses do. But it'll be small cut because I want the resellers to feel as though they're not nickeled and dimed out of uh, seeing their investment grow and liquidizing it as they see fit, liquidating it. The resale market place will be open to any legitimate or collectible item so that, I mean, but because there's a, a very specific finite number in each set and each object is unique, then um, resellers can hold on to that object for a duration period. And if they see that the the prices of that objects in that set have gone up in the marketplace, in the reseller's marketplace, then they might choose to resell it and take the money. There'll be instant payouts or as close to instant as we can get. So if you sell something, money goes directly to you. I probably won't have an interface that has you uploading and, and selling it yourself. It'll probably be uh, via me and or whoever is helping with that. Regardless, um, we'll cut you the check or the direct transfer or whatever uh, as immediately as we possibly can. Um, and that's the idea for the, for the marketplace. Now, keep in mind that in order for your investment to grow in value, the key components are a few. Number one, the structure of the architecture of the marketplace has to be as I say it is and stay that way, which it will. Number two, which it is and will. Number two, the number of people in the community as a whole needs to continue getting larger at a rate that is faster than the proportional demand supply ratio of objects. So in other words, the release of the objects is such that the ratio of five objects to to you know ten objects to twelve hundred subscribers is one object for every hundred and twenty subscribers. So let's say we do an object for every hundred subscribers as collectibles that are available. Well in that instance I think it's fair to say that the demand for the collectibles will continue to outpace the supply as probably given the fact that it's not only a purchase you might want to make because you're a fan of talking with fans people, although I hate that word, but um, but that you're going to purchase, I am imagining, as a multi-valuing consumer decision. You're investing in something, you're buying something cool that you like, you're supporting a show you like, you're doing all sorts of different shit with it, right? But the number one thing is you know you're purchasing it, not only the object, but the art project behind it. You're, you, are, you become part of the larger art project, which is a meta art project that involves the commodification as art. Commodification is art, basically. And art is commodification. And intertwining those two processes into one so that it's inclusive as well. It's inclusive commodification. I don't want... It's inclusive capitalism. I don't just want to sell you an object. I want to sell you an object that's going to make you richer too. Why can't I do that? Why shouldn't we do this? I'm all for win-loss in arguments. I'm all for win-win in business. And I'm all for win-win when dealing with friends and consumers and people who are kind enough to pay attention to anything related to talking to those people. Uh, I don't want to screw anybody. I don't want to. I don't want to sell you something and have you later regret buying it because you think that was a waste of money. So I may not succeed. I'm not making any promises, but I am promising you. I'm making this promise that I'm going to try my goddamn best to make this collectible market idea fly. And so, if you have any faith in my ability to sell people on things, to convince people this is a good idea, 
you think it is a good idea, if you think I've done a good job of convincing you it's a good idea, then I'd highly recommend buying one of these collectibles once the marketplace comes up. And you won't, 90% chance, 95% chance, later on you'll be like, that was a smart decision. I wish I bought five of those. But you won't have. But you'll have one, and you'll be able to resell and make a profit. That's my thoughts. That's my plan, my intention. And I think it's a sound plan. Now, I'm not a big planner, but I have a very concrete plan regarding this, and it's quite specific, and I plan to execute it. Everything else has been sort of, let's see how it happens. This, in fact, Taylor asked me tonight, he's like, I mean, you still have that same plan? Yeah, I do, because it's a good plan. It's perfectly thought out. It accounts for all the variables. I'm going to successfully make a collectibles market. Your object will appreciate in value. All these things I believe, though I cannot assert them to be 100% true and guaranteed or anything. I 100% believe them. And even if I have some element of it wrong, in that case, I will make the adjustments so that it does work. Although I don't expect to have to make any adjustments, I think the plan is sound. I think it's sound and it's complete. It's circular, but as long as you have more new money coming in from outside, which is, say, more audience members, more potential eyes, then the growth arc is, the growth model is sound and everybody wins. As long as you don't get too greedy and try to glut the market and stuff like that. That's not going to happen with me because I'm smart. I don't want to do that. And I want to frame this thing so it's got multiple revenue chains anyway. So that's my little story about selling shit, about talking with Taylor, about all the always open room. Go there. Play there for a while. I bet you'll find as well that you just keep going back in there. And you just every moment you have is so easy to go in there. There's always people. Not always. If there's not people in there, that's its own kind of neat thing. Because then I play the guitar, and I know that somewhere on one of those videos me jamming out, I don't even know how the song up there, but there's a, there's a cool little impromptu song in there somewhere. I like that idea. Hidden little gems in a pile of mush. I like everything about this fucking thing. I love everything about it. This is... This is... This is what it's meant to be. It's meant to work. And it's meant to work for me and everybody who buys into it. That's what I want. I don't want to just. Yeah, okay. I want to be the. I want to be the cool guy who's the center of attention. Everyone is impressed with that person or whatever. But here's the deal. I want. I want to get everybody else in on it too. Like I, I want everyone to benefit from this party. If you're willing to come to my party, I want to be the best host I can possibly be and make sure that you know that I appreciate your willingness to come to my party and that if you're going to buy something from me, that I'm going to work hard to make it not a one-sided transaction. I don't like one-sided shit like that. I don't want to be the host and you're the fan. I don't like that shit. That's stupid. I want us to be friends and I want you to be the host too. And I want sometimes I to be the famous person and you be the host. And sometimes we'll trade. And, you know, it's like I want to play like that. I don't want to play fucking I'm the boss and you're the peons. That pisses me off more than just about anything in the world. And I couldn't, I mean, I would just, it never even occurred to me to want that. But I want to actually pursue it. This may sound contradictory because obviously I want to be distinct, singular, get a lot of attention, be known as special. And yet, I don't want to be treated as special. Because... Because that's not the most fun way to play. I don't know what to say about that. You know, that, that's why. It's not a very fun way to play. Because sometimes I get to be a famous person. I don't have to be the host all the time. You know? And I want you to get to be play how you want to play, too. I don't want you to have to play by my rules. So, what I do want you to do is buy by my rules. Yes, that's right. Purchasing collectibles, the smartest thing you'll ever do. Purchasing talking with Facebook collectibles, 
Here's that thing you tell your kids about and say, look, I am your old man. This has been your, your grandpa, actually. Listen, your old grandpa a smart fella. Yeah. I bought early in TWFP collectibles. Now I'm living large here at the finest retirement home in town. Oh, Grandpa, do tell us more. Well, old host Eric would give his a little talking and a yammering and a yammering and a talking. And he'd say, y'all should buy this. And I thought, well, host Eric, I'm not going to pay you that much money for one of your pictures. But you know what? I listened to him and I said, I think this guy might be right. I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's possible that he's going to make this happen. In fact, these collectibles are going to get more valuable. Well, I had an extra couple hundred dollars, and I bought one of those collectibles, and within just a couple months, it was worth $350. So I said, well, hell, I'll sell this one. I'll buy another one. Well, the price has gone up a little bit, but I got one for $250, and I found one by Host Abraham for $100. I bought that one, too. Well, I got two of them. Pretty soon, I had five or six. I didn't sell those ones. They kept going on value, kept going on value. And pretty soon, I whole, had a dozen Host Eric collectibles and, and Abraham. I had a Host Taylor. And uh, well, I had, it turns out I had nearly a fifth of, of one of the sets. Now, for a set collector, for, for a person trying to complete a set, uh, they can get a little, a little desperate. So when it came time to sell, it turned out there was a collector out there who had purchased every item in the set. The only ones he had not gotten are the ones that I was holding on to to see if they would appreciate. I did not know this when I went to the resale marketplace. I'm talking with plenty of people. But that's how it was. And he paid 12 times what I paid for those things. That's right. What did I do with all that money? Invested it right back in the collectibles market, of course. Got more collectibles. New ones. New set. Sat on them. Once the set's closed, ain't no more releases from that set. You know that's all there is. That's the thing. That's what makes it so effective. You hold on to that set four, uh, you know, number seven, the carbon. And you just know there's somebody out there is going to try to complete that set. They're going to pay a top dollar for that. Top dollar for number four because, of course, every collector is going to appreciate the value. So Derek gets more and more famous. And the truth and wisdom of his collectible market spreads far and wide to many years. So, grandson, to finish my story, how did I become so filthy rich? Well, I bought a lot of Host Eric's stupid little pictures, and it paid off handsomely, just like he said it would. So, that's my spiel to you when the Collectibles Market Place page comes open. <laughs> and I'm going to be, I'm going to fucking try to make this shit work. I'm going to do my goddamn best. If you doubt me, that's fine. That just means you're not going to buy some of the earlier pictures. My plan is to have a schedule of pricing with the final pricings being $1,000 per object. Uh, but that schedule is going to be a slow increase. and we're, the, the earliest objects are going to be sold the cheapest. They're going to go the fastest probably. After they go, we will release the next or even if they don't all go but there'll be a date of release of the second part of the set be a little bit more expensive we'll have occasionally one that's price cheaper just randomly it's a good deal and you know if you're a smart collectible shopper you could potentially set yourself up for a good retirement if you are a young person and you're paying your social security then that's not going to do any good so you might as well buy Hosea Collectibles. It's a wise decision. Wise. So wise. You are so wise. What everyone's going to say to you when you purchase that. You know why? Because it will give you value on so many different levels, like I said. Thanks for watching, Talking to Friends, people. This video is actually not supposed to be about this big thing about that thing. It's supposed to be about how addicted I am to always open the room. How addicted I am to this whole goddamn thing. 
I'm obsessed with it. Everything about it. Everything about YouTube, everything about the old open room, everything about talking to those people. I spend the vast majority of my waking hours doing this shit. And I mean, I've never been happy. <sighs> it's fun. But I do kind of feel like, okay, you can't just sit here all day. You have to do something else. You have to. Otherwise, you're going to feel lazy. Or you're going to feel like you didn't really accomplish anything. I mean, the funny thing is, I keep trying to remind myself sometimes, you are working, Eric. This is work. What you're doing now is work. No, it's not. I'm just talking into the video camera. Eric, you're trying to make this YouTube channel pay. You make videos, it's work. Yeah, but you probably make too many videos, isn't it? Shut up, Eric. Just fucking accept the fact that you're doing something productive. Yeah, okay, I guess sort of. Hopefully it'll become productive. When I get the cloud tools in place, then, then we'll see. We'll see if I am actually smart or just almost smart. That's a tough one, right? Am I smart or am I almost smart? I don't know. Remains to be seen. Now for reals. I don't have time for me to go to bed.